we have begun a new series on why I left the IFB. I think I want to call it um, the IFB exit, but I wonder how it would sound if I say the IF Bexit, the IF Bexit. So we're going to see if that, you know, uh, sticks, right? Um, and this first one, we're going to talk about one of the pillars of a sound church, which is a high view of God. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the 2E Way cast. I'm your host, Eunice. The reason for this podcast, by God's grace, is to promote growth by providing thought journeys with others while provoking charity in all things. Let's start this journey behind the mic. This is going to be, I'm hoping it's going to be um, very encouraging. When we're talking about a church, when you're looking for a church, one of the things you want to look for is, is does that church, does the preaching have a high view of God? Now, I'm not talking about something like, they're, they're saying stuff like, Man, God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. You know, I'm not talking about that kind of high view of God where they talk sort of like uh, they tipping around who God is or what he's did and those kind of things. But I'm talking about showing God in the scriptures and also how important he is because everything is centered around him in the service as opposed to. Because there is another option there. Um, So the church that I came from, this IFB church, and the first reason why I left the church is because it was man-centered. So a very high view of man. Now, the first man that the church had a high view of would be the pastor himself. So he would always be the hero of his story. And um, and I would say this is probably common across a lot of churches that are man centered, where the man, the preacher is the one whom everybody looks to. Everything is centered around him. He's the one that people like, oh, man, you know, I wish I was like that or um, and not just necessarily the man. Because sometimes he bring his family along with him as well uh, in making sure they are elevated. So so sort of make sure they have the same status as him. So at this church where I came from, that would most definitely be true where the pastor's wife would also be um, highly esteemed uh, just as much as him. Um, now... When I talk about the the um, the ministry there and the pastor of the church, I also say that his wife is the co-pastor of the church because a lot of things that that are done there is because of her as well. And he does make sure his kids and at this point they are adults now. They are adults, adults that um they are also so when I was there which would have been eight years ago his kids were kids they were kids then but he was making sure that everybody sort of knew um how great they were like his kids was great his wife was was great they were great people and he made sure that we knew they were great and also too with himself he um you learn a lot about him. Well, you learn about things that he wanted you to know about him. And it's it's not a true picture of who he is, but it is most definitely the picture that he wanted to paint of himself that he wanted you to know that he was. So um, so you wouldn't necessarily get to know who he is um, outside of the pulpit. <laughs> you would know him just behind the pulpit. So the one, and let's get back to um, a high view of God, because I do want to give a little bit of encouragement there in that area. And that is when I think about a high view of God, I want to, I'm thinking about 
um, God being sovereign, right? Sovereign. Um, and there's a lot that's been written about the sovereignty of God. A.W. Pink did a, a really good uh, book. As a matter of fact, two of them, The Attributes of God and also the book, The Sovereignty of God. I highly do recommend those two books of his. Um, when, But simply, if you just think about God's sovereignty, I'm just going to I'm going to use a very simple definition that I heard that God does whatever he wants, when he wants to whomever he wants. OK, God ain't answering to nobody. OK, what God does is just whatever he does is always right. And um, he never changes. He's perfect. He's holy. He is all powerful. He's good. He's loving. Um, there is none like him. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. His ways are higher than our ways. Um, so God and he's revealed through scripture. Scripture is how we know God. And um, so when a man is in the pulpit and he's he may mention scripture, he may mention God and that kind of thing. But when he gets down to the nitty gritty of his sermon, he makes it about him. Or he can find really great illustrations of how to uh, carry out a scripture or or um, some something. He's going to use himself. Right. And he will most of the time be the hero of his own story. And even to the point where he may say, I was just so humble. I sat down and I was just humble. That's a hero. That's a hero of the story, too. So. But when you are putting man in his place and because the Bible tells us that God pities men because they're du they're dirt, they're we're dust. Right. Um, God, he. He owns everything, right? He tr he transcends all things. He's the one who created all things. He doesn't have to answer to anybody who has darkened the counsel of the Lord. So God, um, where I, I know a lot of people like to use the um, that verse to, in, that says he owns a cattle cattle of a thousand hills. Um, but when I was reading that in context, it's, he's dealing with people offering <laughs> sacrifices to him. And it's like you offering sacrifices to a, a God who owns all things anyway. Right. And if God was hungry, he wouldn't tell us. So he is self-sufficient. He doesn't need anything from us. Right. And so especially when we think about the Old Testament sacrifice, we're thinking about uh, a type of Christ showing that without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. That's what those sacrifices were for. They were not necessarily to take away sin, but they were a covering. But it was also a picture of Christ to come who will one day be the lamb that would be slain. OK, and redeem his people from their sins. So so God is not he's in need of nothing from us. OK, so he is very he not very self-sufficient. He is self-sufficient. OK, he's all powerful. He's all knowing. He cannot lie. He's not a man that he cannot lie. OK, when he speaks, he is speaking when he uh, he's speaking the truth. And when he says something, it's, you can take it down. You can take it to the bank. It's, it's a done deal. OK, so and one of the things I wanted to talk about the sort of um, still in this area of high view of God, because sometimes we think we know who God is, but actually it's a God that we have created and created out of our own imagination. So and then we will also think that this is how I understand God and these are my own thoughts. These are not the thoughts of God. I'm not thinking back. I'm not thinking God's thoughts back to, to him. I have actually came up with my own thoughts. And I'm saying, man, I'm glad God revealed this to me. Right. But God did not reveal it to us. It's our own thoughts. And so we need to make sure we can distinguish our thoughts from God thoughts. And then also we need to be able to distinguish that man thoughts, that man in the pulpit, his thoughts from God's thoughts. Um, 
because uh, one of the one of the culture things about the IFB, at least at the one that I was a member of, is the pastor would sort of teach something, and you would never ever talk to somebody and say, "My pastor told us that." You would never use those words. You would never use that phrase. You would use the phrase, a phrase such as how I studied it, how I understand it. This is my observation of it. You know, this, how you would do it. You wouldn't say that the pastor told you this because some, most of the time, it's not that you probably looked it up yourself. You just taken his word for it. And since it made sense to you, you know, you're like going with it. But you need to be careful. You may, it may just be your thoughts. You've taken on his thoughts as your thoughts, but they're not God thoughts. Okay. Because God thoughts are higher than our thoughts and his ways are higher than our ways. Um, So we want to make sure that um, we don't get that sort of twisted, right? Because we have, we've created a God of our own imagination. And one of the things else the pastor would say sometimes is a phrase God's not like that. Okay. So, and we need to um, make sure that God is not like that. Right. Um, Because remember I was saying how God, whatever God does is just and right. So if I see something in scripture and I had, I've encouraged somebody this in this before, if I'm reading the scriptures and I come across something that I'm like, Mm, I don't know about that. I don't think God is like that. You need to make sure that you're not judging God. Okay. So you need to be praying to God and asking God to kind of help you and understand it. Now that, that passage that you're reading is not going to be in isolation. So God is going to reveal his works somewhere else the same way. Okay. So just, um, we sometimes have built a, an, an image of God in our minds that is really idolatry because it's not the true and living God. So allow the Holy Spirit to, to shape, to reveal God to us. Let me put it that way, right? Give us that true image of who God is. Um, Now I know we're not going to totally understand God, but what we do know about God, it needs to be right. Right. And one other thing I want to mention about God is um, of of his person is that God in his essence is one. He uh, God is um, three persons, distinct persons. OK, God, the father, God, the son and God, the Holy Spirit. Um, they are one in purpose, have different roles. God, the father did not down the cross. The Holy Spirit didn't down the cross. Jesus Christ. Christ died on the cross for our sins. The father chose us. The Holy Spirit does that sanctifying work in us. The ministry of our sanct- the of the ministry uh, sanctification work that's done in us. That's the Holy Spirit's work. He's the one that quickens us and bring us to Christ. Um, so he convicts us of sin and law and of, um, and I want to say death for whatever reason. I don't know why that's in my mind, but he re- he most definitely is the one that reveals God to us. He's the one that does that work. So we need to look in the scriptures, see who God really is. Um, God is the aseity of God or the um, uh, the self sufficiency of God. Um, his glory. Uh, we will, he will not share his glory with another. And this, and we're talking about that uh, intrinsic glory. Okay. His intrinsic glory, that glory that cannot be taken from him. Uh, he doesn't need anybody to, to display that. But then there's that ascribed glory where we uh, can ascribe God's glory. And of course we look in God's word to see that. Now the church I came from, I would tell, I have told people this before. I'm like, he eclipsed God's, the glory of God. And what I mean by that is God's ascribed glory. Um, He makes man to be so big and God sometimes get lost in it. Like we, we not even thinking about God. We're thinking more about ourself instead of, of who God is and, and 
and realizing that we want to fall before his feet, right, in reverence. Um, we don't see that Isaiah um, picture of him saying, woe is me, right? We see, oh man, I, um, another thing that was pretty prevalent there is um, with, it's a God that you can manipulate. A God, if you do certain things, God will do this for you. You know, um, and like I remember mentioned before, God doesn't owe us anything. Okay. He doesn't need anything from us for sure. He, now God takes care of us because that's who he is, right? He loves us and he is, um, but, but basically he does not owe us anything. Okay. Cause especially when you talk about the grace of God, grace is unmerited favor. So I'm really, I really don't deserve it. Right. And he's doing something for me that I don't deserve. And then you think about mercy. He's withholding something that I actually do deserve. Okay. So just imagine that you want to manipulate a God like that. If you can manipulate God, it's not the God of the Bible. That's a whole nother other God. Um, and I'm not sure why you would think that you could manipulate God. And maybe it's because the pastor may be manipulating you. Right. So think about that. Um, because I know that I've, yeah, in the past, when I used to be at the church, I most definitely would try to, um, um, manipulate God. Right. Because that's what we're taught to do. We're taught to sort of, you know, dem, um, demand things from God. Now n- he doesn't say it exactly like that. Like the, like the P- Pentecostal people would say it, or those non-denominational Kojic people, you know, pastors would say, you know, like you can demand something from God, but he basically is saying you can demand from God because all you got to do this, this, and these are three, three things you must do in order to, you know, so that is demanding God. Cause you're saying, Cause you can say, look here, God, I, I did all the stuff you, this pastor said that I, so that I must do in order to get this from you and you're not delivering. So, you know what I'm saying? So it is the same thing. So that's man centered. That's making everything about man. Oh, and one example, I'm gonna give you an example where he was saying that, um, obeying God is like drinking cabbage and blueberry juice it's nasty going down but it's good for you and i thought god's commandments the bible tells us that god's commandments are not grievous to us right like i want to obey god right because he forgave me much so i love him much right so so that was one of those statements when he made that i was like what what does he just say right it's like cabbage and blueberry juice. It tastes nasty going down, but it's good for you. Yeah. That doesn't sound like, um, that doesn't sound right. <laughs> okay. Let's, let me put it that way. Okay. So this is our first one, um, of why I left the IFB movement, um, the independent fundamentalist Baptist movement or I'm trying to call it the IF Bexit. Oh, I said the wrong word. IF Bexit. <laughs> yeah, it may not stick, guys. But thank you so much for those that hung in there and listened to this here installment. And I am looking forward to our next installment. Thank you and bye.